Welcome to the Visual Abstract Tutorial Series Part 1 for Beginners. The Visual Abstract is a visual representation of a journal article abstract. A recent study in the Journal of Arthroplasty showed that when visual abstracts are used to communicate research through social media, there is increased engagement online. If your goal is to increase dissemination of your research, the visual abstract is a great way to do that. Additionally, because it is visual, it may be even more memorable. The first part of this series is dedicated to the beginner who has never done a visual abstract before and wants to learn how to make one at the most basic level. I call this type of visual abstract the retro visual abstract because the graphics are very simple. However, if the visual abstract is organized in a clear and concise way, it can still have a lasting impact, which is the main purpose of the visual abstract. By keeping the visual abstract as brief as possible, another purpose is to draw readers to reading the full text. A very helpful primer by Dr. Ibrahim gives more details on starting to make your own visual abstracts. I highly recommend it as it goes into more detail than what I will show here. The first thing you want to do is gather your supplies. You will need a good paper, icons, and a storyboard. As a social media editor for the Arthroplasty Today, the most thought out part of a visual abstract is picking a good paper. Pick a quality paper with sound methods and hopefully results that can change practice. I choose papers with the highest level of evidence as possible and those that can answer simple questions. As you read it, think about the paper in pictures. If you can picture it, it will make a good visual abstract. If you can't picture it, the worry is that it will mostly be filled with text, which defeats the purpose of a visual abstract. Choose where you will get your icons. Due to copyright laws, you cannot legally use graphics from anywhere. Ensure that you are using free icons or pay for a subscription to use the icons. A common one that I used early on was the Noun Project. But there are a lot of others out there. When you have your ideas for icons, start searching for them. For example, type in scalpel. It will pull up multiple types of scalpels. Pick the one that you like the best. You can adjust the icon prior to saving it, and if you don't like what you have done, simply reset it. Pick and save all the icons you think you will need for the visual abstract to tell the story and save them in a folder. There are many different types of storyboards you can use as well, but pick one that you are comfortable using. If you have no idea which one to choose, PowerPoint is a great choice that most people have used at some point in their career. If you haven't, it is very straightforward for making visual abstracts. Now that you have gathered the supplies, you need to put the story together. Colors and font choices should be pleasing to the eye and easy to read. Consider avoiding colors that people with color blindness cannot see. I typically choose basic primary colors with white or black text to make it stand out. As for font, I keep it simple with Arial, but there are others out there that have clean lines. Start with a blank canvas. Use a rectangle shape to make a color band across the middle of your canvas to create white bands at the top and bottom. You can change the colors and add a border as well. The top contains the title and the bottom contains the citation and journal. Use text boxes to add text. The title should have the largest sized font and spread it across to fill up the space. Sometimes the titles are very long, so I frequently shorten the title to fit it in the top. Additionally, if it is a randomized controlled trial, you can put that in the title as well to get people's attention to the quality of the paper and the importance of the study. The bottom contains the journal logo, article information, and visual abstract maker social media handle. The logo can be taken from the journal site. A text box is used to fill in the citation information, and I also make sure that the DOI actually works. You can put another rectangle shaped band in the center to separate out the contents of the abstract. Now you fill in your story with icons and text. For this study population, there were 100 total joint arthroplasties done. During the surgery, 
Intraoperative samples were taken from a splash basin that was on the surgical tech's back table to wash the instruments. Those samples were cultured for 48 hours. Randomization was done between the control with sterile water and the treatment with betadine. To make a randomization box that is oriented vertical, choose text box, text direction, and stacked. Increase the length of the box for longer words to fit. You can also click on shape outline, pick a color, and pick the weight. It's nice to have connecting arrows from intervention to results. When inserting arrows, you can change the format shape by right clicking and you can change the dash type between different interventions and you can change the arrow type and size and increase the width. This study also looked at OR time, so I also inserted a clock icon to show those results as well. Start plugging in the outcomes and results from the interventions. I try to make the numbers larger and bold because after the methods, the results are the most important part of the paper. In this study, the betadine had 0% contamination and longer OR time had higher contamination. They also listed the bacteria that were isolated, so those were listed with a petri dish of bacteria. The final part is the conclusion or the take home point for the study that you want people to remember. I insert a text box with a border. I will fill the text box with a different color from the background to make it stand out and I frequently make the text bold with italics. That is how you make a retro visual abstract. I hope this tutorial has been helpful to get you well on your way to increasing dissemination of your research. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or comments via Twitter or email. Thank you.